Hi, today I'm going to, to read you some of the writings of Clemens von Metternich, a prince from Austria. Metternich is one of the original architects of conservative ideology. And conservatism um, and it, its ideas have been passed right on, right on till today. Um, modern conservative movements, the Republican Party, etc., etc. Conservatism is initially born as a response to the French Revolution, to Napoleon, um, because Napoleon takes the ideas of liberalism, things like uh, governments should exist for the good of the people, people should have freedom of speech, there should be democracy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Napoleon takes these ideas, uh, born through the French and the American revolutions, and he spreads them, you know, ironically, as an emperor who didn't give people these rights, spreads them all through Europe. He reorganizes Europe, he conquers Europe, he throws all of Europe into this huge tumult, um, and within 10 or so years, um, he's done and, and exiled and, and dead not much longer than that, not much long after that. And so Napoleon has created chaos, if you will, um, upheaval, all through, uh, all through Europe. And after his defeat, all of the leaders in Europe, they get together at what's called the Congress of Vienna. The Congress of Vienna, actually, they have to go on hiatus and take a break because Napoleon comes back and they have to go defeat him again. Um, but the Congress of Vienna are all the, the old school leaders of, of Europe before Napoleon deposed all of them, meeting together to try to decide how to reorganize Europe. And part of this is, you know, simply, you know, redrawing borders and that sort of stuff and putting, putting the old, old guard back on the thrones of, of all these countries. But part of it also is a response to the ideas of Napoleon and to the potential threats of revolutions in the future. And the idea on how to stop these ideas and these threats are best expressed by this guy, Clemens von Metternich, um, who, as I said, is one of the architects architects of conservative ideology. And so this selection that I'm going to read, read to you comes from the Congress, Congress of Vienna, and it is Metternich's speech on the evils of liberalism and what conservatism truly stands for. So, here we go. Clemens von Metternich. We are convinced that society can no longer be saved without strong and vigorous resolutions on the part of the government still free in their opinions and actions. What does it mean to still be free in your opinion and action at this point? It essentially means governments that have been taken over by crazy liberal revolutionaries. We are also convinced that this may be if the governments face the truth, if they free themselves from all illusion, and illusions are like the idea that these liberal ideas could actually produce some good, if they join their ranks and take their stand on a line of correct unambiguous and frankly announced principles. So what we got to do is have a straightforward approach listed in principles distributed throughout these governments that we can follow to get rid of liberal ideas and the revolutions they cause. By this course, the monarchs will fulfill the duties imposed upon them by him, capital H, meaning God, who, by entrusting them with power, has charged them to watch over the maintenance of justice and the rights of all, to avoid the paths of error, and tread firmly in the way of the truth. So our power, the nobles, the kings, comes from God. And this is our sacred responsibility to use this in a way that truly benefits all people. You know, ourselves probably being the most important here. If the same elements of destruction, i.e. Napoleon and the revolutions, which are now throwing society into convulsions, right, have existed in all ages. For every age has seen immoral and ambitious men. Ambitious is a naughty word here. Hypocrites, men of heated imaginations, wrong motives, and wild projects. Yet ours, by the single fact of the liberty of the press, possesses more than any preceding age the means of contact, seduction, and attraction whereby to act on these different classes of men. So, yeah, there have been hot-headed men who uh, lust after power for themselves in all ages, right? And they have these really persuasive ideas that can convince people to follow them. But in the past, they didn't have a way to get their ideas out to everyone. But now, 
we have the printing press. And the printing press can take the craziest ideas with the most destructive potentialities and make them seem attractive to everyone. We are certainly not alone in questioning if society can exist with the liberty of the press. A scourge, it's a really bad thing like a plague or something that destroys all your crops, causes famine. Unknown to the world before the later half of the 17th century and restrained until the end of the 18th, with scarcely any exceptions but England, a part of Europe separated from the continent by the sea as well as by her language in her, in her peculiar manners. So, the press, printing press, very bad. It at least had been subdued, kept under control by leadership until this modern time. But now, um, it has spread throughout Europe and, and must be stopped. The first principle to be followed by the monarchs, united as they are by, their, by the coincidence of their desires and opinions, should be that of maintaining the stability of political institutions against the disorganized excitement which has taken possession of men's minds, the immutability of principles against the madness of their interpretation, and the respect for laws actually in force against the destroyer, the desire, rather, for their destruction. So conservatism, right off the bat, don't change. The system has worked for hundreds of years. Don't throw it away willy-nilly because of some new ingenious idea that will eventually just cause destruction. So the stability of political organizations, monarchy, right? Um, don't throw it out for the sake of an ideal like democracy, which only brings destruction. So don't change. The first and greatest concern for the immense majority of every nation is the stability of the laws and their uninterrupted action, never their change. Change is bad, right? Stability is good, okay? And Metternich is not stupid. Um, he's not just a prince trying to organize society in a way that benefits only him. What he's saying, similar to what Hobbes said, is look, Revolutions cause horror and misery for almost everyone. They're founded on principles that sound good. They're seductive principles, right? But if you put them into place, if you destroy all the laws that exist, all you're going to cause is misery, right? Think about the reign of terror, 50,000 dead, right? Think about Napoleon's wars, half a million people dead, at least, all in the name of what? Liberty, equality, fraternity, right? Bloodbath, right? Metternich um, is not an idiot here. <clears throat> Therefore, let the governments govern. Let them maintain the groundwork of their institutions, both ancient and modern. For if it is at all times dangerous to touch them, it certainly would not now, in the general confusion, be wise to do so. So if there's any time in the history of the world where you want the stability of your government, it's right now, right? And this is like, you know, 1814 in the wake of this massive destruction that Napoleon has wrought onto all of Europe. Let them maintain religious principles in all their purity and not allow the faith, Christianity, to be attacked and morality interpreted according to the social contract or the visions of foolish sectarians, all right? Keep the church intact. Most likely talking about the Catholic church here. You don't need any other Christian sects mucking things up, and you definitely don't want to be like the French revolutionaries banning the Catholic church, right? The church should stay. The church should be pure. It's a great, stable institution um, teaching, teaching people how to live. Let them suppress secret societies, that gangrene of society. Secret societies are essentially groups of revolutionaries, of liberal thinkers that would meet in secret, because their ideas were illegal in a lot of these countries, to spread and discuss these new ideas. The secret societies are where the revolution starts. And he calls them gangrene. Gangrene, if you don't know, is a horrible infection um, that you get, remember, there's no soap back in the day, right? And your, your flesh in a cut turns green and it rots away, 
If you have gangrene, the only way you can get rid of it, generally speaking, is to cut out the infection. Oftentimes, chopping off the limb, um, and if you're lucky, it won't spread. If it, if it spreads, you're dead. To every great state determined to survive the storm, and the storm is the French Revolution and the Napoleonic conquest that followed it, spreading these crazy hot-headed ideas, there still remain many chances of salvation and a strong union between the states on the principles we have announced will overcome the storm itself. So the countries of Europe need to be united in these principles of conservatism and crush every rebellion as soon as it pops up so it doesn't spread and cause another wave of horror that Napoleon's conquests uh, brought to Europe. Good? Thanks. To the French Revolution, to Napoleon, um, because Napoleon takes the ideas of liberalism, things like uh, governments should exist for the good of the people, people should have freedom of speech, there should be democracy, etc., etc. Um, Napoleon takes these... Hi, today I'm going to, to read you some of the writings of Clemens von Metternich, a prince from Austria. Metternich is one of the original architects of conservative ideology. Years um, he's done in, in exile and, and dead not much longer than that, not much long after that. And so Napoleon has created chaos, if you will, um, upheaval, all through uh, ideas uh, born through the French and the American revolutions, and he spreads them, you know, ironically, as an emperor who didn't give people these rights, spreads them all through Europe. He reorganizes Europe, he conquers Europe, he throws all of Europe into this huge tumult, um, and within 10 or so, and conservatism um, and it, its ideas have been passed right on, right on till today, um, modern conservative movements, the Republican Party, et cetera, et cetera. Conservatism is initially born as a response 